Hello everybody out there. Um, I'm sure you've seen an awful lot of live videos. <laughs> They're probably getting a little bit monotonous. But uh, I thought uh, I th felt like I had a few things uh, to say. So I thought I would just do a uh, live stream. Um, I'm out here at Camp Liberty. I think that's the name of it. <laughs> Last I checked. Maybe it's Camp Freedom. But uh, we're uh, in a new location across from the um, prison here. Uh, we've had some new people coming out, and that's pretty pretty neat. Uh, people coming from all over still. Um, got a lot of campers and tents and trucks and whatnot. We were visited by local media today, uh, Mirror Media. Uh, they took some pictures and did some interviews, and then we just had a local uh, talk show host that um, that uh, interviewed some people. Um, interviewed Gavin Stein. Um, Gavin Stein's going to be on the talk show, his talk show tonight. You know, we got some real rock stars out here, in my opinion. Gavin Syme and uh, Kelly Stewart and John Lamb. And, you know, those guys are great as far as getting the message out. And that's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about is the message and how it, how it involves all of us. Um, you know, this prison is right behind me. It's, for, it's, it's, a, it's a prison for profit. It um, traffics in human beings, and there's a vested interest in keeping that thing full. And, I, you know, people need to understand the Catch-22 of our whole entire system now. Uh, the federal government, um, you know, the federal court, the plaintiff is the federal government. Think about that, the plaintiff. Where, where's, where's the uh, injured party? Come on, where's the injured party? Uh, there is no injured party. What you have is you have some people in the federal government that um, have vested interest in stealing the lands. That's basically it. We all, we all know about Hillary Clinton and selling 20% of the uranium to the Russians. And, you know, she was going after Dwight Hammond's ranch because there's a lot. That's all, that's all old stuff. But it goes to show... Who's really manipulating and controlling things? Now, like I said, you got a prison behind me. It deals in it deals in human beings, human trafficking. They got contracts with the state of Nevada to keep that thing f full. In fact, from what I understand, if hey Brandy, here's my daughter. We don't get to talk too much, <laughs> but uh, so anyhow, there's this huge vested interest by the federal government. All right to find everybody guilty. And uh, as I said, the plaintiff is the federal government. The, um, the court is by the federal government. The prosecuting attorneys are the federal government. The defense attorneys to their, you know, I don't want to get on them too hard, but they're, you know, they're paid by the federal government also. So you, you got everything stacked against you already. Then it gets even worse. Then you get a judge like Gloria Navarro. You know, I don't know how much she's going to get paid for these convictions, but I, I, you know, they they do. They get paid to get people convicted. How insane is that? Like up north in Oregon, uh, Judge um, Anna J. Brown, I've heard that she got, I don't know how true it is because I've never seen it, but $100,000 for the, the last conviction she's got. How can you have, that's a conflict of interest. How can you have justice? When you have that kind of a conflict of interest and who in the world do you get to talk to about this stuff because everybody just ignores you you know it's just like the sheriff that come out the other day sheriff Worley. all right we had a chance to talk to her we told her what our complaints was she did an investigation she comes back and she said well we didn't find anything wrong are you serious uh why don't you know Sheriff Worley, do us all a favor. Go in a three by three uh, shower stall, handcuffed for 13 hours with no food, no water. Okay, defecate on yourself, and then come and tell us. Then come and tell us nothing. No laws were broken. Nobody was tortured. Sheriff Worley, you have no credibility. If you if you do that, if you go and do that to yourself, you know. Get a video so, so we can all see it. I will listen to you. But that's how it always goes. You know, then we had another deputy sheriff that came out. 
David Zion tried to talk to him about the Constitution of the United States. You know what he said? Uh, I didn't come here to argue. You know why? They have no argument. That's what always happens. They have no argument. That's their way out. They're not going to really dwell into this kind of stuff. They're on a, excuse me, they're on a compartment minimum. Man, I swear they mess with the signal every time they get going. I don't want to go outside. The wind's blowing so bad. And you're not going to be able to hear me, but I think I'm going to have to go out. Okay, going outside now. Wow, I can't stand this wind. Wow. Okay, let's watch the signal for just a second here. Make sure it's not going to go south of me. I hope you can hear me. I'm going to try and speak as close to this as I can. I'm going to switch it, switch it around so even though I'm close, uh, you don't have to see my face. So anyhow, they're on a compartmentalized need to know basis and so who do you talk to when you try to talk to the local sheriff when you try to talk to the deputies you get the same thing these are the foot soldiers so if you go over them you know over their head and you try to talk you just get keep getting put off over and over and over you know you can't get anybody really to listen to you I don't care who it is, you know, the attorney general, nah, they're not going to return your calls. The governor, nah, they're not going to, you're nobody. They're not going to return your calls. And so what happens is you get people that fall through the cracks and they have no representation really. They have no due process of law. And especially in this court with Judge Gloria Navarro. I put out a video here a week or so ago and I asked any attorney any uh, anybody that's you know educated in the law to tell me how do you get a fair trial how do you get a fair trial when the when the judge can cherry pick the law cherry pick the evidences and cherry pick the verdict you can't you can't get a fair trial that is an impossible situation so Everybody needs to wake up. This is all, if you get, if you fall through the cracks or if you get caught up sideways to any law enforcement officer, I don't care who it is, you end up in a place, I'm going back in the car, I'm going back in the car, hopefully my signal will be good. You know, for example, the BLM, the forestry department, all right, uh, you know, maybe there's some good guys out there, I just don't believe it anymore. You know, evil is as evil does. Stupid is as stu stupid does. If you're working for an evil organization, what does that make you? You, you see, they're, they're, they're just doing their job, but their job is oppressing their fellow man, and they don't care. I'm serious. They don't care. They don't care that people are suffering in these prisons. They don't care that they're being tortured. They don't care that they're being subjected to a soft kill. And the soft kill is, you know, these guys are going getting close to a year and a half being in prison now. All right? Well, in that year and a half, they've been abused terribly. They've been fed crappy food, devitalized food. It doesn't have the vitamins and minerals and enzymes that you really need to be healthy, all right? And then you get subjected to these very stressful situations. Now, this is going on for a year and a half. You know how hard that is on you mentally, emotionally, and physically? It's terrible. It's terrible hard. The, the only thing that we got going for us with our patriots and the bunnies is most of these men are we're in good condition. But there's two people that I know of that have died out there that have died in that prison right there. One was 51 years old. I forget how old the other one is. Well, that's not that old. So, you know, they're not getting the proper health care when they really need it, too. So you have, you have a situation which is beyond just bad. You have a situation that is deplorable. It's an abomination. It is torture and abuse for our fellow man. And I, I ask, I ask, you know, here we are in Pahrump, and I hope this gets out to the locals. We've got some things that we're going to try to do with the locals and get them out here because this is in their backyard. They could end up here just as easy as anybody else. 
you get sideways to one of these Leos, one of these law enforcement, and they always take the they always take the Leos' word for everything. I mean, it's, if you're going to win in court, I mean, you almost have to have a slam dunk, innocent case before you're going to win. And even then, if the evidence is not presented, you could end up in one of these places. So it, it's just absolute abuse. Again, I say. You know, we've tried really hard to talk to the foot soldiers on the ground. They always just say, hey, you know what, we're not here. And it's, they always say the same thing. It drives me crazy. Uh, we're not here to argue. You don't have an argument, dude. That's why you're not here to argue. You just feel threatened. You feel threatened that you're, you feel your authority's being threatened and you're not going to take the time to actually listen because you know what? You just might get educated. You just might find out that there are some serious laws, constitutional laws being broken. And that's, you know, that's the, whole, the thing that drives me also nuts about all this is you can't get the sheriff to look at it from a constitutional perspective. They won't do it. And, these, and she's supposed to be a constitutional sheriff. They're not going to look at it like that. They just don't. Um, you know, if they did, if they would really take the time and look at it and go through everything, they would realize that there's been some major assumptions made by the federal government. Number one, the federal government assumes that it, that it controls all the public land in Clark County, Nevada. The evidence is overwhelming. They don't. Okay, they assume that they have that the BLM has authority. The BLM has no authority. So you get all these assumptions. And there are big assumptions, which if the sheriff would really look closely at it, she would realize that this is a gross violation of the Constitution of the United States. But they won't go that far. They refuse to go that far because they're not going to stick their neck out. They just don't want to stick their neck out, you know. <clears throat> and then this prison provides jobs for the local economy. They pay taxes. And so all of a sudden, you know... It's not just, they're protecting them. They're not going to allow any disruption in the normal day-to-day -day activities of this prison. They're just not going to. So <clears throat> what we're left with is a populace that has been, is brain dead, you know, basically. Uh, that's been, this has been going on for a long time. People would rather do other things like watch the NFL or <clears throat> the, the any sport. They'd rather do that. They'd rather go down to the bar and drink all day or who knows, you know, but they have, their priorities are so upside down and we're losing our country. We're losing our patriots. We're losing some of the best people in this world and everybody's priorities are absolutely on something else. They don't want to be bothered with it. They, you know, if you, sit, in fact, if you try to talk to them, they get insulted many times. They just get insulted and they wave you off and, you know, I ain't got time for that. Well, that's the case. That's the case until that person, that person ends up in prison and then they get a real eye opener. They get a real eye opener. So I'm hoping and praying that more and more people will come out. Uh, you know, I kind of got, uh, Got myself in a little bit of trouble here lately. I don't talk about the militias anymore. I'm not even going to bring it up, you know. Um, and and I guess I can kind of understand that. Um, we everybody wants to do everything peacefully, and I, and I admit we want to do it peacefully. And uh, the moment that you have um, a lot of armed people with long guns that come out and open carrying, it does change. It does change uh, everything. Okay. Um, and I, I will admit that. And as, as long as we can continue peacefully and, and none of our um, prisoners are killed and they do have a chance, believe it or not, after all I said, they do have a chance to be still being found not guilty. Um, everybody that's out there that's possibly in the jury pool, I hope you understand one thing. You can't give the government well, not even one little conviction I heard today that uh, Judge Gloria Navarro is pushing for 30 years on Todd Engel on two extremely minor charges. Now that jury, 
they probably thought, eh, you know, this is no big deal. We'll give the government something, you know, make them feel happy. And they're under a lot of pressure from this judge to find, you know, she told them, you got to find somebody guilty. I know that. So they go, okay, let's throw, let's throw the federal government, let's throw Judge Gloria Navarro a bone. And we will have two minor convictions. All right. Well, those two minor convictions, what did they just turn into? Uh, they turned into 30 years from what I understand. That's why if you're in the jury pool, you can't. When you go in there, you can't give the federal government one thing. You just can't do it. Okay. Because they have all these minimum sentencing laws. And, and our Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, is pushing for those. He just made it, you know, made a big deal out of it that we're going to push for minimum sentencing laws. And so they can take a minor conviction. Next thing you know, you're going to, you're in prison so long, you're going to die there. So this thing is so convoluted. It is so upside down. It is so backwards. And quite honestly, I don't have all the answers. Um, you know, I don't know what more I personally can do. And all these wonderful people out here that, I mean, they, they you know, they've driven thousands of miles to be here to be vocal and to stand and bring attention to this. But if we're just being uh, constantly ignored, the only thing that is even going to begin to help is if you have like 10,000 people up here, you know, like 10,000 people or even a thousand people. I, you know, I sometimes I get excited and exaggerate. I mean, 10,000 would be awesome, you know, but even a thousand people, I mean, right now, I think we might put be pushing 50 and, uh, and that's good. That is good for the people that are here. You know, I used to always say, well, the, the important ones showed up. But anybody that shows up is going to, is important to us. And we need a lot, lot more people here and uh, just to bring attention to it. So, you know, if there's anybody out there who's got any better ideas than me, than me you can tell me I, because I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. So, uh yeah, it's a catch-22, folks. Just about the time you think you got a victory, they, you know, they jerk it out from underneath you. Um, I, I was mortified when I heard what they, what I've heard about that the judge is pushing for Todd Engel. Um, Greg Burleson, um, he's never going to get out of prison. He'll die there. Uh, so, and and I haven't. I don't know that Greg Burleson was really that bad of a guy. I think maybe he just said some things he shouldn't have said. How many people have said things they shouldn't have said under certain conditions? You know, um, who knows? He might not have meant anything he said because he was never read his Miranda rights. Neither was Todd Engel or any of those other people that uh, Longbow Production. And that's a whole nother story. Longbow Production, FBI front, but they can go in incriminate you without reading your Miranda rights. There's so many things wrong with that on so many different levels. Uh, and it needs to stop. It just needs to stop. I mean, they're destroying the media, the First Amendment. You know, they go in there pretending that they are the media, pretending that they are a production company. They offered everybody drinks and unfortunately for Greg Burleson, he has an alcohol problem. And he drank uh, quite a bit. I found out he, drank, he had drank, from what I understood, he had had several drinks before he even got there. And then they give him uh, two shots. And I found out they're double shots. Well, Greg Burleson's not that big of a guy. I guess he, I would say 140, 150 pounds. That's a lot of alcohol for somebody like that. And, you know, they just keep plying them with alcohol and whatever and pushing their buttons and you know trying to get them to talk and they, those were leading leading questions i sat through that court and i listened to what was said those were leading questions that longbow production uh put forth those men and then of course they give them a leading well i don't want to put words in your mouth that's exactly what they were doing and now they use this as evidence as evidence against these men that's such a gross violation of the fifth amendment the, our constitution right but the you know from what i can tell is there any amendments is there any of the bill of rights left seriously or is there any of them any of these bill of rights left i mean they've been these guys have been denied their eighth amendment right their sixth amendment right the first their second their fifth it goes on and on and on <coughs> and uh i just don't see how in the world 
we're going to be free in this country anymore at all until unless this stops. Every single man, woman, and child out there is in jeopardy right now. Look at what Child Protection Services does in these states. Baby homes, okay? They just didn't want her to get all those inoculations. They didn't want their little baby to be fingerprinted and receive a birth certificate. At least not at that point. I mean, that's their, they're the parents for heaven's sakes. So what they do? They literally took that baby while the mother was nursing that baby. Okay? This is the type of stuff. And the courts always back these people up. Especially Child Protective Services. That's such an oxymoron. We know that they traffic these children in, in these human trafficking in these sex rings around the world. I mean, it's coming out more and more all the time. And yet, if you try to stand up to Child Protective Services, who, who backs them up? The sheriff or the local police department. And if you get crossed sideways with them, again, you're going to end up in one of these prisons. The list goes on and on and on and on. And if we don't do something, we're all going to end up in a country where freedom is nothing but a distant memory. And it's coming from every single direction. It's uh, it's insidious. It is a, you know, we were talking about it today. It's just like the old Gaddy Ant and Robbers, you know. Um, it's uh, it, it, That is the true conspiracy. And I don't think, I personally don't think Trump's going to be able to do anything about it. Uh, I think he's got himself in a situation where he's going to be fighting the embeds that were put there from the last three administrations. He's going to be fighting them for, pretty much his entire administration. So anyhow, yeah, uh, if we don't stand up, and I am and I mean make a serious stand, um, I have no problems personally put myself in harm's way for the future generations. But if we don't, our future generations have no chance. I want every parent to go home and look at their children. Take a long look at your children. I want every grandparent to go look at your grandchildren and you got to realize they have no future. The way things are going right now, they have no future. If we don't change this, if we don't stop it in some way. And, uh, and I appeal to all the law enforcement out there. You guys, your job, your paycheck is not more valuable than your country. It's not more valuable than the future generations. You guys got to know when to say enough is enough. It stops here. And, uh, you know, and you got to back each other up. You always hear about the, the thin blue line. Well, every once in a while we do get a Leo that comes out and says, you know what, I'm just not going to go along with this anymore. I'm going to take a stand, and I'm not going to arrest people for ridiculous reasons. I'm not going to plant drugs in their house or their vehicles or whatever. I'm not going to get on the stand and lie anymore. And what happens to them? What happens to them? They get fired. Or they get uh, intimidated so bad by the other officers. So, you know what? You police officers out there, you got to stand shoulder to shoulder. When you have a brother that is willing to take a stand and actually do something against this this beast, this federal beast, you got to back him up. you got to stand shoulder to shoulder with him. And the first part of that is got to get an education. You know, so many of the sheriffs we talked to, they took an oath. They never read the Constitution. In fact, we had a sheriff, a deputy sheriff out here yesterday when David Zionberger told him about the Constitution. You know what he said? Oh, I'm not an attorney. I'm not a lawyer. What the hell? Okay, is that, how, is that what they all think? I think so. You know... The, the Constitution of the United States was written for an eighth grade education. I've read it probably 50 times. It's not that hard to understand. You know, you can anybody can go through it and uh, actually understand. There's a few parts and places in there that, you know, you might have to look up and do some research. But for, but why would you take an oath <coughs> to something you don't understand? To something you have no intentions of actually um protecting you know you take an oath to uphold the constitution defend it against all enemies both domestic and foreign how can you take an oath to do that because if your word is no good what does that mean about you as an individual come on where's your integrity where's your honesty where's your honor you know there used to be a saying that i used to see i, I used to see it all the time with the military death before dishonor and i actually think that's really 
a wonderful thing because without honor, without your word and being an honorable human being, I don't, you know, you're just, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. You all have heard that before too. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. Well, the problem is our Leos for the most part are falling for everything. They're falling for all these ridiculous laws that are created every friggin' year. 3,000 new laws every year. Well, you know what? David Zeinbrugger says it best. <clears throat> when you're trying to keep this law over here, you're breaking three other laws over there. So no matter what you're doing, you're breaking a law. And that is true anarchy. That is true anarchy. Uh, you know, it's not just no law. It's when you're overwhelmed with everything you do is against the law. It's like the IRS. They can get you. It doesn't matter how how honest you are, how what you call law-abiding, they can always get you if they want you. That's what's happening in this country. There are so many laws that are unconstitutional, these statutes, that they can get you on something when they want to. All they have to do is go back. First of all, they arrest you, okay? And what drives me crazy, too, about arresting is they handcuff you for officer's protection. That is, that is arrest, why they do their cursory investigation. That is illegal. That is illegal, okay? So there's so many things that are, that are wrong. And there's so many things that are under the color of law that is not law at all. So anyhow, I, mean, I know I'm getting a little bit, little bit long-winded here, so I'm going to cut it off here in just a second. I just want uh, everybody to know that we're out here. We're out here for the long haul. We come and go quite often. Um, we're, we're, we're actually starting, when I say we, I haven't personally, but some of the other people are actually starting to work with the locals more and more. They're going to have a barbecue out here, invite everybody to come out. Um, Gavin Stein's going to be on a talk show tonight, a local talk show. I know John Lanz, I saw him interviewed this morning by local media. And uh, so we're trying to integrate and uh, bring this all to a focus for everybody. All you out there, if you can get here, please do. Please get here. Arrange your schedule. Do everything you can because your life, your freedoms depend upon it. God bless everybody. Talk to you later.